It's Women's History Month, and we're celebrating the contributions women made to the Metro. Today, Children's Mercy recognized as one of the top children's hospitals in the country, but it came from humble beginnings. A pair of sisters founded it in the early 1900s, but the sisters didn't just build a charity hospital in Kansas City. As Fort Wayne News anchor Caitlin Knute explains, they built bridges to the African-American community, all while breaking barriers left and right. Tom McCormley is a local historian who's written the most recent account of the Berry sisters for all children everywhere. The older sister, Alice, was the, was the business person and she had, that, she had that mind. And then Catherine was the more passionate, the more... Um, she was described as a dictator by some people because she knew what she wanted and she was relentless and she was going to uh, do what she had to for the kids. One thing they did have in common, their determination and conviction to always do the right thing. Those were traits passed to them by their father, an abolitionist during the Civil War. Their progressiveness, that, that's what I would say, they were very progressive, I think, came naturally because of the way that they were raised by a dad who had very high principles and was willing to stand up for those principles. It was their dad who insisted they get an education, sending them to high school. After that, the Berry sisters set their sights even higher. So the, the deal was this, that Alice, the older sister, would work as a teacher to pay for Catherine's education in medical school. And then when Catherine was done, she would return the favor and um, support Alice's uh, education in dental school. And that's what they did. Initially, the women set out to make it in male-dominated fields, Alice as a dentist and Catherine as a surgeon. But in 1897, their focus changed when they found a sick little girl in desperate need of help. And Alice was the one who brought the first child home that she'd found abandoned on the streets. And she looked at her younger sister and said, it's time that somebody takes care of these kids and you and I are the ones to do that. They rented one bed at Women's Hospital. Word spread of the two sisters willing to treat orphaned patients and those whose families simply couldn't afford to pay, something that was uncommon at the time. And that's the story of so many children from that era that were they were kind of disposable property. And if they were sickly, they couldn't help their parents in the farm and they couldn't they couldn't be a val as much value to the families and so they they ended up being on the streets seeing the need the sisters focused on serving those children and moved to a house donated by a kansas city socialite in 1903 the location was officially opened as mercy hospital but it wasn't long before they'd outgrow that location too so the sisters turned to fundraising their strategy was pretty simple they asked for money all the time. <laughs> Their pleas worked and they raised $375,000 to build a new hospital. Sadly, Alice died before it was completed. But Catherine soldiered on and the new Children's Mercy opened in 1917 along Independence Avenue as a charity hospital. Until the 1950s, Children's Mercy did not accept children whose parents had money or parents who had insurance. They also did not accept payment for any of their services and the entire medical staff was volunteer until the 1960s. While that was a major accomplishment, it wasn't enough for Catherine. When Children's Mercy first opened, black children were not allowed inside due to segregation. Because she'd lose funding from donors, she found another solution. She partnered with her friend and fellow surgeon, Dr. J. Edward Perry, and they started a separate Children's Mercy ward in Wheatley Provident, a hospital for African Americans. One thing that was important to Catherine, this hospital would offer the same level of care that white patients were receiving. One of the things that Dr. Richardson said more than a century ago, and I'm, I'm quoting, she said, I have not served children unless I have served them all. It was a novel undertaking for the time, one that was successful and created an ideology that's central to children's mercy today. Long after the sisters' deaths, their legacy lives on in a number of ways. For example, the hospital's previous location still stands. It just now houses Kansas City University. And inside this building, they've actually named a conference center after Dr. Katherine Berry Richardson. Alongside a plaque that commemorates some of her achievements, they've actually preserved the original skylights under which she once operated. You see, back then, she didn't have all the fancy lights you'd find in an operating room. Instead, she operated by Mother Nature's light alone. And speaking of those operations, 
operations, it's worth noting Catherine was an accomplished surgeon, as is evident looking at these before and after pictures of some of the cleft palate surgeries she performed. As for Alice, her skills as a dentist prompted the sisters to include dentists in their hospital, a practice that remains at Children's Mercy today. Talk about two remarkable women. Now, one thing that's interesting, despite all they did for children, the sisters never had children of their own, at least not biological children. Catherine was known to bring patients into her home to free up bed space and to continue caring for them. She even had a young orphan she raised as a son who would later go on to serve as a public health leader for Kansas City. Back to you.